What if the Confederates won the Civil War? The so-called War of Northern Aggression raged on for years, with hundreds of thousands of American men dying, some at the hands of their own friends or family. Today we're going to do a playthrough with the EU4 mod Land of the Free, which introduces a ton of flavor surrounding American independence, their early years, and the inevitable civil war surrounding the right to own slaves and state versus federal law. This mod has a special place in my heart as I am the one who made it, so go easy on me for historical accuracy or for timeline issues. The mod is linked in the description if you want to try it out for yourself, and if you have a friend who you think might enjoy this, go ahead and send them a link. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And here we are at war, the Confederate States versus the United States. You can see here we are indeed the Confederacy of States, giving us some solid bonuses. There's also a few other unique government reforms that have been added in the mod. Taking a look over here, you can see we are outnumbered. We've got the same amount of cav, less cannons, and less men. Initially, we are down one stability, so we're going to try to get that back up ASAP. In the meantime, let's boost our economy up and get a couple of these advisors working for us. Ideas, we start off with the aristocratic ideas as well as religious firepower, which buffs our cannons and then some trade. We've got 20% professionalism. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slacken those standards four times, giving us a nice chunk of manpower. And now that makes it a lot easier for us to get some Merc companies. Let's go ahead and go with the Grand Company here. And uh, let's get a couple of our boys grouped up and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully avoid any major engagements right off the bat. Jefferson Davis has given us some mercenary maintenance, which is actually going to be super useful for the war. Since we're built up to our force summit here, the Dixie Rebel Army is going to give us some cav cost and shock damage received, which will be very useful. If we employ at least level 3 mill advisor, we're going to get something else over here. Some manpower recovery speed as well as some mill advisor cost. I don't think we need that right now. This one right here, to live and die in Dixie, requires us to have at least 50 war score against the United States and to control their capital. It will give us an event as well as some extra bonuses over here, which looks pretty nice. And if you take a look down here, Sowing Descent looks pretty sweet. If we can get them enough war exhaustion as well as war score and a spy network in their country, we will be able to get a nice modifier as well as an event, which I'm not going to spoil too much for you, but it's going to be good. You can see Confederate ideas are giving them some spy network construction as well as years of separatism. Our finisher is some harsh treatment cost, which is pretty good. We get 10% morale of armies as well as some manpower recovery speed and army tradition from battles. Missionary strength, attrition for enemies, which is useful, autonomy change and minimum autonomy in territories, trade efficiency, and cavalry cost. And this army over here is going to be sieging down Washington. We got a wall breach. Let's go, dude. That's awesome. The war goal is to defend Richmond, our capital. So that's pretty nice. Things are going pretty well for us in that regard. Let's take Defender of the Faith for the extra morale of armies. Robert E. Lee heading in for the Battle of Knoxville. Let's see how it goes for that. So let's be mindful. It looks like they might be heading up to get us off of Washington. Taking a look at the comparison, we've got much better morale and better discipline than them. So we'll see how that goes over here. We have won the Siege of Washington. Good news indeed. Head on into Memphis and let's reinforce our men in there as well after a couple of days. Oh yeah, heavy casualties inflicted on both sides actually. Let's teleport Robert E. Lee in over here just to make sure that Robert E. Lee is the one who gets the beat up on uh, William T. Sherman. Losses are looking pretty good on their end so far. Let's get moving, start sieging down Louisville. Start pushing into their lands a little bit. We do have some cores up here in West Virginia as well as Kentucky, and I definitely would like to take as much of that in the peace deal as possible. We've won the Siege of Louisville, so let's get our army mobilized and heading over here to protect our homeland. They've got a wall breach on Richmond. We can't let that happen. They're splitting up their armies pretty solid, so this would be good for us. Yep, I think this is our move right here. Catch them over here in Fredericksburg. Very nice. Absolute demolition of the men in Washington. And Fredericksburg is going to be a bit more of the same. We've lost 40,000 men, but they've lost 54,000. And we've got Miltech here, which is going to give us a bit of extra artillery fire. So that's going to be extremely useful. The Siege of Philadelphia has been won as well. Carpa sieged down most of their development over here, and we're in a good spot. To live and die in Dixie. One stability. Jefferson Davis will gain some bird mana. 20 army tradition and the sack of Washington, huh? Feel free to stop and read, but the war with the Union Pigs to the north has been going well for the Dixies. That's all you need to know. The U.S. will lose a stability, gain some more exhaustion, gain some devastation in Washington, and it will destroy the White House. Stonewall catching out Ulysses S. Grant in Woodward, Oklahoma. Going about as well for them as you would have expected. Big battle between Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant over here in Cincinnati. But the reinforcements arrive, and the U.S. doesn't stand a chance. After four years of brutal fighting, we're up to 79,000 losses, 48,000 of which were to attrition. 
but the U.S. has lost a whopping 86,000 men. We have a whopping 69. <laughs> Nice. And the ticking war score is about to max out. Ah, yes. Sewing discontent, giving us some spy network construction and an extra diplomat, which is useful. But the event, fruitful subversion, will happen. Feel free to stop and read, as I always say, but it looks like uh, New England doesn't really feel like sticking around anymore. New England is released as an independent republic. And since we share a common enemy, let's go ahead and ally these boys, which will give us a common enemy mission, which will give us another stability, which is really nice, as well as some siege ability. So let's just go ahead and boost our stab up a little bit. Cheeky stab right there. And then there you go. And now in order to get this mission here, we just need to be at peace. And that will allow us to get Robert E. Lee as an advisor and reconstruction in Dixieland. The death of Jefferson Davis, an administrator, a diplomat, or a military mind. Well, 556 is pretty dang good, so let's go ahead and go with him. Frederick Taylor, the second president of the Confederacy. And what do we have here? The Great Lakes Republic, another breakaway state, has broken free and declared war under Consul Jonathan Williams. Well, I say we pick up another ally over here. Why not? And with low enthusiasm, I think it's about time we uh, broke free from here. So we are not allowed to take any land in this war, but what we can do is, is have them give us some stuff. They are our rivals, so let's go ahead and humiliate them, take their money, and then as much war reps as we can get from them. 99% is fine with me. We shall break free and uh, take all of their money in the meantime. That money will be nice because it'll help us pay off a few of our loans. Here we go. We will gain a paper mana as well as Robert E. Lee as a National Manpower Modifier Advisor. Very good. Reconstruction in Dixieland. The South is victorious, so we will gain some dev costs, global devastation reduction for 10 years, and we will also lose some war exhaustion. Though I don't think we really need as much devastation reduction. It looks like the US is the one who got most of the devastation. It certainly looks like New England is handling their own in their war. Great Lakes Republic has their capital of Detroit occupied. We'll see if they're able to break free though. A fractured United States. My Confederate heart in this timeline appreciates that. We do have Fort Sumter here which uh, obviously we can upgrade, and it's going to give us some serious bonuses, fort maintenance and fort defense. And we also have the San Antonio missions, which would give us a missionary as well as missionary strength and cost. We will now revise the Constitution, giving us an event for a new capital for the Confederates, as well as autonomy change and reform progress growth. And we will now lay claim to the southern borderlands of Mexico and the so-called New Mexico to the west. A new capital for the Confederates. Feel free to stop and read, but uh, Richmond will start the construction of a new great project. The capital of the Confederacy, when fully upgraded, will give us national unrest and governing capacity. Very solid. Oh yeah, the economy is definitely picking back up. Loans are paid off and we are running a decent balance. Pretty soon we'll be able to embrace global trade and uh, get caught up on all these techs. This is an event that can happen in uh, tobacco and cotton provinces. It's gonna give us quite a bit of bonuses in those provinces for a time, which is gonna be really nice. Also, many of the cultures in the New World have been reworked, and you can see American is its own culture group now. If you take a look down here, you'll see a couple of these provinces are of an Afro-American culture, and every province that has this culture will uh, gain a little bit of local unrest, but will produce more trade value. Obviously, if you culture convert, you will lose that uh, modifier. So it appears that the Great Lakes and New England both failed in their independence attempts. I don't know how exactly that works, but uh, they're both now subjects and they're both very disloyal, which is definitely going to be to our advantage. And with coastal trade done, we've got ourselves some trade efficiency so we can start working towards this one to have at least a certain amount of money and some light ships, which will give us more mana as well as a solid modifier for construction cost and time. Might as well annex some of the natives over this way while we have some time. And let's just annex some more natives, why not? And we now have economic recovery, giving us an advisor as well as some dev cost and global prosperity growth, which is gonna be really nice. We've already got quite a bit of prosperity, but this will help solidify it over out here in the Western parts. We also have another reform here. We're gonna go ahead and require service to vote. That way we don't just get mindless drones who vote along party lines, right? Our truce with the US will be over here in about a year. So let's get our armies prepared because we're going back in. With our truce expired, we're going to immediately go back in and attack them. Let's go ahead and attack them from Mayfield and uh, make this as quick and painless as possible for us. I will be taking everything that I have cores on, which is all of West Virginia as well as Kentucky. And with that reconquest finished, we now have our mission to unite Dixieland, giving us some bonuses in Kentucky as well as West Virginia. And here we go. A little bit of mana is always nice. And then a little bit of modifiers for construction cost and time. 
I have something in mind for this. Universities are going to be cheaper. So what we're going to do is we're going to find all the farmlands provinces that have cotton and tobacco. Invest in some universities in the south to help children in the south read better. But more importantly, it's going to give us what we need to boost up this development to make big, big bank. You guys will see, this is going to be incredible. With trade ideas finished, let's get some goods produced as well as some trade efficiency. With the burgers loyalty over 60, we'll get that 10%. If we come over to a state like this and set our local development cost on there as well, you can see these cotton provinces on these farmlands that we built these universities have incredibly, incredibly cheap development. So we can get those guys up over eight very easily. And uh, that is what we will do here. And just like that, slavery ordained by God will happen. A bit of a macabre but interesting history from the south here. You can see we will gain an advisor as well as some mana and a permanent claim on the Guinea region. Guinea being over here. So if we wanted to head over this way, I think we could. The Caribbean slave trade requires us to beat up on Cuba a bit. If we attack Cuba, we gotta fight France. But if we attack Mexico, we just gotta fight Cuba and Mexico. So I think what we're gonna do is we're going to separate piece out Cuba and then annex a ton of land from Mexico. Now we just need to get some plantations built and that's gonna go pretty smoothly for us. We'll get some money based on our cotton and tobacco production as well as another advisor. This visual mod that I'm using clearly does not play well with a lot of text on provinces. <laughs> Just ignore this. This is not part of my mod. Frederick Roberts attacking the Mexicans in Durango and wiping them. Ouch, that hurts. Cuba will peace out annulling their alliance with France, which is great. Take some war reps, all their money. And just like that, the Confederate States grow. Now we can click Asserting Our Sovereignty, which is going to give us some missionary strength versus heathens, as well as years of separatism and the Knights of the Golden Circle. Feel free to stop and read, but it seems that we have a secret society on our hands. Get to use the organizer as an advisor, and we get some mana. Truce is up in May, then we're back to war with the United States. Off to war we go, this time for Washington. An agrarian society, giving us a bunch of money based on our production for cotton and tobacco, as well as a half-off advisor. I will happily take that. In order to revive the slave trade, it looks like we're going to have to have at least five provinces that are producing slaves and five provinces in the Caribbean for this one here. Now, there's a decent reason for this peace deal, and I'll explain it here in a second, but we're going to take Maryland, Ohio, as well as Michigan, including the UP. Hate to break it to you guys, but the UP is indeed part of Michigan. We're also going to take a bunch of money and war reps from them. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to, one, yoink a bunch of development from this area, which I'd like to do. We're going to core it all up. But the main thing is, is I want this C&H mining company when fully upgraded is going to give us some very solid modifiers to our goods produced as well as local goods produced in this area. Our truce is up with Cuba, so let's head on in and attack them. We're going to need to take quite a bit of land from them in order to get what we're looking for. We will take the entirety of the island of Cuba as well as one island over here in Martinica. And that is going to allow us to use this as a naval base of operations to get over into Africa. So what we are going to do here is we are going to put these guys on the development edict. We are going to develop it for quite cheap. We're going to get as much production development into this province as humanly possible. And we'll give it one more click here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this guy, which will change the trade good to copper and give it some more base production. And then each level up will give it a bit more base production as well as some goods produced. This is going to be, end up being extremely lucrative for us. We can play this correctly. And now we can afford it. We're going to go ahead and upgrade this guy to level three, which is going to boost the production up even more in this province, which is crazy productive. Look at those goods produced, as well as a global modifier of plus 10. And since we had range, I sent a colonist over here to West Africa, so we'll have a base of operations. We're going to need it because for some reason, Jolof is allied to the Ottomans. It's almost as if they knew that I was coming for them specifically, so they allied the Ottomans. And with our navy built up, you can see here, three random provinces in the Caribbean region will have their trade good changed to slaves and will receive a province modifier, giving some goods produced, as well as if we have at least two centers of trade, we will gain five light ships in each port. We only have one, so we won't get any of the light ships, but that's okay. So three of our provinces are now producing slaves over here. Think of it as the Caribbean is the slave trade hub of the new world. It's a disgusting thing, but it's actually historically accurate. Now all we need is two more and we'll be able to get this lucrative imports event. And would you look at that? The Ottomans are not going to help these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and attack them right now as we have a second here. And uh, get on over here because obviously they've got a lot of slaves and I would like to attack them and take those. And here we go. We will fully annex those guys. And uh, we now have uh, Dixie Guinea. With that, we will now revive the slave trade, giving us an event here, increasing the price of slaves for 35 years. 
Another truce is up. Another war declaration for these guys. Simple as. This is all mine now. Easy peasy. We can now reclaim Yankee Land, which will give us a dev cost modifier, which is super nice. An ocean going navy, gaining Franklin Buchanan as an admiral. And after a nice hard fought war with um, a lot of Mexicans perishing at the hands of the Confederates, we will now take a large chunk of their land down here. We will core up all that we are able to. We will click this mission here, which will give us light ship costs and light ship combat ability for 20 years, as well as claims on a lot of the areas around here. Look at that. It shall all belong to us. After a bit of development, taking a look at our missions here, we've got two, the Dixie West Indies, which will uh, allow us to basically modify all these provinces that we developed to get this mission here, and it will make them cheaper, but also uh, much more lucrative in terms of trade value. Uh, and then this one right here, this is um, this is kind of my magnum opus mission. Uh, well, at least kind of magnus opus moment in this mod. Click this mission right here, and we get a uh, an event here. Essentially, it says, the people are clamoring to abolish slavery. And for those who do not know, uh, it's widely considered that even if the Confederates would have broken away from the US, they would have abolished slavery eventually on their own terms and transitioned their economy. This event here is to simulate the public as well as people abroad are clamoring for abolition. So what do we wanna do? We can reinforce this slavery and uh, basically establish a coup and the Knights of the Golden Circle will take over, or we can abolish slavery, which is going to harm our economy in the short term but there are some really, really solid ramifications. And we also unlock a brand new mission tree based on what we go with. We are going to abolish slavery. All of our slave producing provinces now produce different trade goods. Havana now produces glass over here, right? We now have tobacco down here. And the price of tobacco as well as cotton has tanked, which is going to hurt our economy pretty bad. However, we can come on over here and we can shift our focus. Well, let's see here. If we take a look over here in Appalachia, we have some uh, iron producing and copper producing provinces. So why don't we invest into those areas? Try to get our economy reinvigorated, right? Go ahead and embrace this institution. Take this technology and get that trade efficiency up because our economy is going to need it. Next idea group, Liberty is pretty solid. I think since we've abolished slavery, we can say that we're not uh, too bad for that. So we're going to go with Liberty. This is a unique idea group to the mod. It's also in my idea groups reworked mod that I made, which is kind of like um, inspired by this mod. And with a bit of investment into the Appalachia, we now are able to shift our focus, giving all these provinces that meet this trigger, which is actually all four of these guys here, an upgrade to their workshop, as well as we will be able to unlock a new decision to industrialize our nation, gradually transitioning away from production of cotton and tobacco. Very exciting stuff. So go ahead and click this button here. You can see all of these provinces now have an upgraded counting house, which is really cool. We also have another mission down here because I took the time to dev up Chattanooga and we are going to discover gems in Chattanooga, American gems, local goods produced and trade value modifier in that province as well as changing the uh, trade good from copper, I think it was, to gems as well as giving us some development and some prosperity in Chattanooga. Very cool, huh? On top of that, we also gained some PP, some claims on this area, but we also get some claims up here because I think it's about time we started uh, looking back towards the old world. Now you can see this guy right here. We have some cotton and tobacco provinces. You can see them highlighted in the purple there. And we also need some money because it costs some money to invest into this economy, right? We will lose the money, but we will have an event that will happen in each round of industrial investments. We'll produce three events. There's a five year cooldown, and then we'll be able to do it again. This mission right here requires us to not have the post abolition economy, which is just a time thing. And we have to do at least five rounds of industrial investment. Clicking this decision right here, we are going to have industrialization within the Confederate States. So you can see Spring Hill, Durham, and Covington are all possible places where we could be doing this. Durham seems like the best place to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn Durham into cloth. And it will also change the manufacturing if you have one in that province. And just like that, we have salt in Lagrange now. Pretty cool. With five 30 dev provinces, we are now a developed nation, gaining some tax modifier, war exhaustion, and some mana. Always appreciated. Let's take a look over here at New York and uh, upgrade West Point. Upgrading that is going to give us some millman as well as some army tradition. It's also going to give us a global modifier of some army tradition and military advisor costs, which is nice. But more importantly, it allows us to reform the Dixie army, giving us more professionalism, more army tradition, and we'll upgrade it to a tier three faux free, which is awesome. If we have at least three generals right now, we will get land leader, fire and artillery costs for the rest of the game. So let's go ahead and do that. Yes, please. 
And if we have at least 50 cavalry and the land of the Longhorn completed, we'll be able to get plus one cavalry shock for the rest of the game as well as land leader shock. So let's get started on that. Very good, so we will now gain a natural scientist who is 75% off, which is great. Now I realize that I'm actually not playing with Trade Goods Expanded, but if you were playing with it, uh, the missions are incorporated to give you some solid goodies if you, uh, if you do use them. We also have full employment for having lots of manufacturing. So for the rest of the game, we get goods produced and dev cost, which is solid. We now have Southern Stables giving us 10 Cossacks Cavalry as well as, for the rest of the game, Cavalry Shock and Land Leader Shock. Very solid modifiers. And with the uh, North Atlantic Islands conquered, we will now upgrade Fort Williams, which is over here in Greenland. It will become the Atlantic Staple Port as well as giving us some claims over here in Scotland. And with our five rounds of industrial investment finished, all provinces that have been industrialized will gain 50% local goods produced and 10% trade power for 20 years. Very solid modifiers. The United States has been exiled into Brazil. If we were to get them full annex, we'd be able to get 10% AE impact and 5% admin efficiency for the rest of the game. And getting into Europe is gonna give us another 5%, giving us a total of 62% admin efficiency, which I think is pretty swell. If you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. For $5 a month, you'll get early access to all my videos on my Patreon. Link for that is in the description below the video. You can check out Land of the Free on the Steam Workshop. It's linked in the description below the video. I've been slowly but surely working on a 1.3 update to overhaul some of the New World faiths, bring in some Methodism, some Southern Baptist, maybe even a little bit of Mormonism. So it should be pretty fun. Stay tuned for that. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, or my Twitter, they're all linked in the description as well. And that's all I got for you for today. Until next time, stay chill.